G'day folks. Well, I got a few shipments in the mail today. Or courier, I should say. And, uh, yeah. I got bits for, for the Intel server, Quad Xeon server, from the UK. And I also got this one, which originally I thought might have been part of that shipment, but it's not. Um, this is something that I bought on eBay recently, and I have not had one of these since I was about 10 years old. So... Let's get it unwrapped completely. I've already taken the outer cardboard off it and have a good look at what it is. Um, it's going to be a fairly lengthy process, I think, without damaging it. So stay tuned for a bit more. Aha, look at that. I haven't had one of these since I was a kid. It's a uh, Amstrad PPC 640. It's got a Intel uh, 8086 or 8, yeah, I think it's an 8086 processor, 4.77 megahertz. Um, it has 640 kilobytes of RAM, a monochrome LCD, highly reflective monitor, which unfortunately seems to have re recently broken its mounts in transport. They've both collapsed, which is really a bit of a bummer, but it's still all there. Um, there's a lot of abrasion marks on the casing. Transport wasn't the nicest to it, despite excellent work on packing it. It just, yeah... That's just the problem with um, transporting delicate old plastics via road transit and or any kind of transit. I think it was a, actually air transport, but either way, it came down from Sydney, so that's just one of the things that happens with a lot of old plastics like this. They do become very brittle with age, and sometimes there isn't much you can do to stop it from uh, breaking. But yeah, it's got a full L LCD screen. You can also plug a CRT into it. Twin floppy drives, 720K floppy drives. Uh, if this drive was missing, it would mean there's probably a hard drive in there, but that's the, that's the rarer model. That's the more expensive model. So, not too fussed about that. I can probably still get 720k floppy disks, and I believe the software to run it's on, available online. So, making up a floppy disk with um, the operating system and everything on it's not going to be too hard at all. Uh, runs off 12 volts, uh, a power adapter. I don't know if it's AC or DC, but... We can find that one out easy enough. And it also... Uh, I'm going to go back in there. There's a built-in modem, if you want to access a bulletin board or something in the 1980s. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, not a bad little kit. Yeah, like I said before, I had one of these years and years and years and years ago. Probably about 17, 18 years ago. Input DC 12 volts. That's easy enough to do. Yeah, approved for connection to telecommunication systems. It's made in Korea. Serial number 5328X36686. Okay. And yeah, it uses 10 C cell batteries. <laughs> I don't think I'll be running it on battery. I'll probably be using the uh, external power adapter. So yeah, that's what I've got to play with at the moment. Where does it plug in? There's probably a flap somewhere to plug it all in. That's under there, no. Yeah, there'll be a plug-in point for the uh, DC adapter. Bit of a shame those are busted off, but that looks like transport damage, unfortunately. There's not much you can do about it when they get this old and brittle. And the LCD is connected by a fairly sturdy ribbon cable, but I'm not going to test it. Anyway, I guess I better figure out how to put some power to it. Okay, well here's the expansion ports and everything. Fairly easy. Serial, parallel, regular CGA video, monochrome video. Expansion A, B. And, uh... I don't know what the big one is. It's got DC in above it, but it's mon DC in. Probably monitor maybe. And that one. Yeah. And a phone input. An unusual phone input. Anyway, I'll do a bit more research online and give this thing a bit of a clean up. It's got that I haven't been cleaned in 20 years sticky feel to it, which makes it all the more authentic. <laughs> and uh yeah, get it cleaned up, do some more research on it. Um, 
I cannot remember how I powered mine. I think I actually had batteries. I don't think I even had the power adapter for it. So I'm probably just going to use the lab power supply function on the um, soldering station that I got and go from there. So yeah, that's one of the original laptops, I guess you'd say, or desktop portable. The thing weighs, without batteries, it's not too bad. It's about 8 kilos. Um, with batteries, I imagine it would be the full 10 kilos that they state on the uh, websites, the collector's sites. Little spots of spider poop all over it as well. <laughs> Straight out of the cupboard into my workshop. You gotta love it. Nah. Uh, I'll definitely send a video to the uh, guy who uh, I bought it off in the description. It's been a while since I found one and it's really good it came up this cheap. I mean, it's not too, given the price, it's not bad for considering the discs and things aren't here, but I can certainly make those up and go from there. Nice. Oh, look at that, a clean spot. <laughs> I love doing this sort of thing. I'm going to go over it and give it a full detail and clean up. I'm using a very light um, janitor's cleaner. Well, I shouldn't say light, but it's plastic friendly, all surfaces friendly. I mean, this stuff's ABS or polycarbonate, so no, it's very good stuff. I'm using Shifty on this. And yeah, you can see there's an original spot and one which has probably 20 years worth of grime on it, which is typical of old equipment. And it's good, gives you something to do. <laughs> I still got to get into all that server gear, but that can wait. I'm going to play with this toy first. Okay, well, let's power it up. I've got a 12.4 uh, volt regular DC adapter. Well, it's 12.4 without load, so it'll dip down a little bit under load. Um, I've used this thing on a million different things, so it actually fits the plug quite well, and we'll see what happens. So that's still on. That's already online. Um, let's go. It's on battery, which is empty. There's no batteries power on. Oh, look, it works. This, this screen is ridiculously reflective. <laughs> it's kind of bad. So it's cycling through the drives. Yeah, it wants a boot disc. Are you going to tell me anything? Going over to CRT display. Is that because it thinks this is folded down? Possibly. Yeah, we just dropped the display. And we'll back up again. It wants to work. I'm going to have to make up a uh, boot disc. It is going straight over to CRT. It might be related to the fact that the mounts are broken. I don't know if there's a uh, switch down there. I imagine it might be. If you fold the display right back, it might trigger a switch. No, it's not sitting on anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's automatically going over to a CRT thing. It's still powered up though. It's working. I'll have a bit of a play around with it later on. I want to uh, open up these boxes, but first of all I want to get some software and some discs because I don't think this is going to do anything else until I get something. Yeah, it's a bit odd. Anyway, that'll do for now. I know what I'm in for. Uh, thanks for watching.